What we did obviously is all the normal elements of a uh, change program. You start with uh, a declaration at the top. If uh, you don't have a commitment from the CEO, it's very difficult to get it through in the company. Uh, we put uh, clear measures out there uh, and declared those measures uh, publicly, 50 in our case, uh, audited and reported on, on an annual basis. But then more importantly, you have to share your vision with the company. And for us, obviously, it's a purpose-driven business model to decouple our growth from environmental impact at a time when we're already hitting the planetary boundaries and then increasing the overall social impact. Interestingly, uh, we launched that just after the financial crisis in 2006, 2007. We launched this in 2009. Uh, so people had a higher awareness of the need to make a positive contribution to society and the take up or the understanding obviously was uh, was there because the environment was there and it's become in a sense worse and, and the adoption has become quicker. Millennials understand it so you get a suction from the bottom of the company and directions from the top and where these two meet is where you need to do most of your work. So we spend a lot of time on uh, building capabilities, uh, uh, setting goals for individual uh, parts of our operations and, and the breakthrough I think that makes our model so uh, powerful is that it covers all of our brands and all of our countries obviously but more importantly that we take these commitments throughout the value chain and where we see that we can get most traction and commitment is in fact in this total value chain. Getting out of uh, carbon in your value chain, getting out of deforestation in your value chain, addressing the issue of uh, livelihoods and jobs for smallholder farmers. Uh, providing uh, opportunities for children to reach the age of five by fighting infectious diseases and the list goes on. So the power is there and then linking it to your brands, which is what we do as a consumer goods company, is the most important thing. Every brand has a purpose. We build it into our brand key, as we call it. And it's that uh, the stronger the purpose, uh, we can show now the better our brands perform financially as well as in growth terms. Well, consumers get it. Uh, obviously, uh, consumers look for a product they can afford, so price is important. Uh, the quality of the product needs to be good. If the food doesn't taste good, they're not going to buy it. But then if you ask consumers, do you want to have companies behave responsibly, increasingly so, uh, they would say yes. And in food in the US, 80% of the food would, uh, the growth of the food market is in, in responsible products. Uh, green, organic, bio would be good examples of that. And. Uh, people are looking increasingly for authenticity, uh, where does the product come from, how is the product made, how are the people being treated. And uh, obviously there are no mono issues, some care about animal rights, others care about sustainable sourcing, some care about labor standards in the value chain. So you really have to work uh, this holistically if you want to be there uh, long term. And uh, it's absolutely important as you know uh, from uh, opening the newspapers daily. Uh, that it is important that companies operate with an increasing level of transparency and make positive commitments to society. There are too many companies that have a hard time verbalizing their purpose and uh, then you really should ask yourself if that is the case, why are they there for the first, in the first place? So for us it's very important that our business model becomes a positive contributor to society over the long term because we like to be around throughout the long term. So this sustainable aspect of our business model goes very much together with our long term vision of how business should be run. So the Sustainable Development Goals, which were developed in 2015, September 2015, and signed off by 193 countries, and I proudly wear the pin that shows the 17 goals uh, has a simple objective to irreversibly eradicate poverty in a more sustainable and equitable way. And the investments we have to make are about uh, estimated to be about three to four trillion a year, which is only three to four trillion uh, percent of the global economy. Now we are at a point right now that the cost of not acting is starting to become higher than the cost of acting. Conflict prevention and wars take up nine percent of the global GDP. Loss of biodiversity costs a 3% of the global GDP. Climate change itself and all its indirect effects, are air pollution, effects on health and, and, uh, and, uh, and well-being, 5% uh, of GDP. So we are at a point that it is cheaper to attack the issues and invest in them to solve them than to deal with the costs. So not surprisingly, 
uh, in our study of the uh, implementing the SDGs through businesses, we see an opportunity as a minimum of $12 trillion and up to 25 to $30 trillion. Uh, high investments. Then the question is, why isn't it uh, happening? Obviously, it's, it's happening to some extent. The direction is clear. The direction of uh, implementing the SDGs or climate change or attacking the issues of food security. Uh, we've made great progress in this world. What we're dealing here with is not the direction. I think people start to understand that now, broadly. But we deal with the speed of implementation. And there are some boundaries that I think are in place that help us uh, sometimes, and there are boundaries around us that sometimes prevent us from moving fast. I'm not talking about the issues of self-interest or, you know, uh, some uh, some people uh, prefer the status quo for obvious reasons, but the bulk of the people and organizations in this world want to have these issues being addressed. Business understands as well that there is no business case in enduring poverty. So what gets in the way is not the goodness of people. There's no CEO who wants more people going to bed hungry or more air pollution or, or more children dying before the age of five. I haven't met them. So what prevents them from doing this is often the boundaries that we operate and the short-termism of the financial market. How do you move that to the long term? How do you put a value on economic and social and not only on financial capital? So how do we redefine value? How do we change our economic system to not only reward capital but also reward labor and get a better income distribution or Gini coefficient. So if we don't change the boundaries in which we operate, it is very difficult to change behaviors of the people at the critical mass that we need to move at the speed that is required. So, so that is really what we are focused on and uh, in our position when you run a company like this which touches two and a half billion consumers a day and uh, seven out of ten households in all countries in the world, then with that size of the business, you then also have an opportunity to perhaps be out there a little bit more and, and create this transformational change. Viktor Frankl, who wrote the book A Man's Search for Meaning and was a Nazi concentration camp survivor, uh, when he wrote this book, he said very astutely that when they built the Statue of Liberty on the east coast of the United States, they forgot to build the statue of responsibility on the west coast of the United States. So we very much believe that with that liberty that we have to operate everywhere, that we as a company also have that responsibility to help move this world in the right direction at the speed that is required. Where we're short of in this world is not the ideas, not the economic potential if we fulfill these ideas, but we're actually short of leaders, courageous leaders that go out there and and are willing to move these systems forward because it requires a lot of effort. Not surprisingly, there will be skeptics or cynics along the way, people who love to see you fail. But at the end of the day, uh, if we don't do this, uh, who is uh, going to fight for the rights of citizens that unfortunately aren't able to fight for themselves anymore?